Great. All right. Um, so today we are going to be talking about uh, conditions and error handling. Um, specifically, there are a couple of articles on um, the Arlang site. Actually, let me get that opened. Uh, which I can't see because it's full screen. Okay. Um, the uh, formatting messages with CLI and customizing condition messages. But I also kind of went off. Um, they mention uh, in one of these, uh, in I think the formatting messages, yeah, they link over to the tidyverse error style guide and that took me down a whole rabbit hole. And then I also kind of do an intro to the CLI package. So, uh, so we're gonna go around there. So the main things that we're looking to do is to figure, to learn how to construct easy to understand error messages and kind of define what easy to understand means to a degree. Um, we're gonna use CLI to format messages and talk a little bit about why. Um, we're gonna talk about how to bridge between Arlang and CLI for um, messaging. And we're gonna do, uh, or we're gonna look into a little bit about how you can customize CL output, CLI output on your machine. Um, I've, I haven't actually done this and I guess making it work with your preferred theme is the main reason for this. And I actually think I need to do this at, uh, on a work machine because sometimes the error messages I have to um, highlight with my mouse because they disappear on the screen. And I suspect that is because of this setting that you can do. So, okay. And then um, we're gonna, I, I mean, I'm gonna briefly look at, there's some other condition functions that uh, largely, like this seems to be something they've tried to solve several times and then CLI is where they like really solved it. And I think to a degree, these other condition functions are for um, like a previous attempt at solving. Um, so we'll look at them, but, and, and then some of them are actually useful, but we'll go into it a little bit. All right. So uh, to get started, I want to go into the CLI functions a little bit. So Arlang has a board, warn, and I think message actually. Um, CLI has a board, warn, and inform with CLI underscore in front of those. Uh, this is their preferred messaging now. They don't always use it. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about like the transition, but CLI was pretty clearly created in order to make it easier to use their style. Um, and it does some really cool things. And so it's kind of, it's the way, uh, the way of the future. It does, it makes it interesting because um, like, I can't find cases that use some of the things that are in CLI. Um, I just did a little bit of searching, but like some of the things that look like they would be useful, um, they haven't implemented yet, uh, at least not, not in anything public or, I don't know, I didn't search right. Um, and so uh, I can't think of it. And actually, now that I'm saying that out loud, I think that was actually an, uh, one of the different Arlang functions that I couldn't find any cases of. But it's still, it's definitely something where you look at an error message and you're like, oh, how, you know, how does this generate it? Oh, it's generated using Arlang still because they haven't ported it over, but then they use the trick that makes it look kind of CLI-like. So anyway, so CLI, um, the, the main thing in CLI is you, instead of, well, you can just give it a single character vector as the, the message, but you can also give it, or sorry, you can give it a character scalar, a single value, um, for the message like you would on an, on something, you know, on a board from Arlang. Um, or you can give it a uh, vector and it uses the names of the vector to define um, like uh, emoji, basically. Um, so if you name it with a V, uh, they say that that stands for success, but clearly it stands for victory uh, and it's a check mark. So if you if you give it the name of a V, uh, that one or any of the any of the ones that are named the V will have a check mark at the front. Um, if you name it with an X, that means danger, and it'll have a big X, um, possibly a red X, depending on what kind of terminal you're on. 
I has a little I icon for info. Um, exclamation point has an exclamation point, and it means it's a warning. And there's a whole list of these that you can see in the CLI documentation, but that was some of the main ones. Um, I think we actually get into, oh, um, I didn't list here, but bullet, like asterisk, um, makes just a bullet with no uh, designation. Um, there are a few more, and I can't remember what they are, but um, that's the general general idea. Um, you can also give it classes, but that seems to be less uh, important than it was like two years ago. <laughs> that was the thing they were doing in all their packages. Um, so you can give like the it give it a class of uh, abort um, and anything else that goes that our lang can use. Um, they don't talk about that like at all in these. So, um, oh, and then the other thing is you can use the dots to pass it on for um, all the other things we've looked at about funky ways to build error messages and to refer to the environment where the error actually was triggered and things like that. All right, so uh, this is the detour that I went on of to understand kind of why all of this is useful. Um, I went to the tidyverse style guide talking about error messages. Um, and I have some summary of that as kind of the bulk, bulk of my notes here, because it became pretty clear that this style guide is like why CLI does what it does. Um, CLI also does a whole bunch of other things, but uh, the, the core of the messaging, they have rules for their error messages. Um, I mean, you know, guidelines, but their uh, their newer messages definitely seem to follow these uh, guidelines pretty strongly. And it, like I said, CLI seems to be built uh, to make messages that follow those rules. And the general idea is that you have um, short bulleted statements and you use sentence case plus punctuation. And then there are specific rules past that, but everything should be like each, you want most things to just be one line because it gets less weird in different situations um, and use uh, sentence case plus punctuation is purely a style thing, but that is what they do. So they list that in almost all of the guidelines after here. I just wanted to include those two up front. All right. So first thing is um, at the start, you should have a problem statement. Every error message should start with a general statement of the problem. It should be concise, but informative. This is hard. That's what it says in the style guide. Um, I agree, uh, but it is nice when things do this well. Um, and then they had a breakdown of this into two types that if there's a clear cause for the error, uh, use the word must. So n must be a numeric vector, not a character vector, and must have length one, not length two. And if you don't have a clear cause, then use can't. Can't find column B in data, can't coerce dot X to a vector, can't find specified depth in X. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, the I think I forgot to use this style uh, going forward, but in CLI, uh, this is an unnamed bullet. So you don't put, uh, any any name on the bullet for this because the specific message or function CLI error, CLI warning, or CLI inform chooses how to format that first line. And so you leave it unbulleted and then it does its thing. Um, does that kind of make sense so far? And welcome, Gus. <laughs> Hi, sorry, it's been a hectic few weeks. <laughs> no problem. Totally understandable. Uh, and I will say this um, this week, this thing that I'm doing here has been super useful. Um, just this like this page of it, let alone the rest of them. I've been writing a package and writing a lot of error messages and uh, having these guides makes it a lot easier to feel like the error messages are useful. So um, oh, the other thing about these is that I found interesting that I can't help noticing now is I'll be using some uh, tidyverse or uh, rlib function and get an error. They don't all follow this yet, um, and they probably won't all ever follow this, but uh, it's 
like noticeable to me now that, oh, that error message isn't as helpful as it could be because it doesn't follow these guidelines. So, um, but yeah, so start with uh, must or can't. Um, yeah, all right. So the next, next rule uh, is then go into details. So um, describe the exact, exact error using that X equals uh, naming convention. So X equals location 100 doesn't exist. So, you know, that would be, um, uh, uh, I, I don't have the, I don't think I have the one that goes with this, um, but the, you know, there would be some description at the top that is, uh, you know, uh, that might be, you can't find specified depth in .x, for example. So that might be the, the kind of general problem statement and then location 100 doesn't exist. Um, general problem statement, n must be a numeric vector, not a character vector. Uh, result one is a character vector. Um, but if you can't locate the exact problem, like you just know that something is failing, but there isn't a uh, concise way to say it. Um, it says to list issues with uh, bullets with an asterisk. So for example, um, size two existing data and size three column Y. So that's a case where the sizes have to match and you don't know which one's wrong. You just know that they don't match. And so they say, don't put an X on it when you don't know which one is wrong because you're implying with the X, you know, that this one is wrong. And really one of these is right. Um, so I thought that was another good, just little piece of piece of advice. Um, and then they, after that, they give contextual info with I equals. So um, location 100 doesn't exist. There are only 26 elements. So that'd be if you're trying to index the hundredth member of a list or something. Um, only values of size one are recycled. That one goes with this. So it's that it's not going to recycle these. So uh, that's just some contextual information. And then finally, like if you're sure uh, or pretty sure um, what the source of the error is, uh, you can provide a um, additional hint with an I that ends in a question mark. So um, did you mean species equals Satosa question mark, or did you use uh, pipe instead of plus? That's a couple of them that they have added. And I love these when they come up. Um, it's the, the equals equals, you know, that happens uh, often in filter that I accidentally type just equals. And so they um, have built their error messages to give you a common or give the common mistakes, like a, a really um, precise fix but they put the question mark on it because maybe that's not what was wrong. Maybe you called the wrong function or maybe, um, you know, something else. Um, they did say, you know, like, uh, you might not want to do those at first, like use um, error reports and uh, examples that you find, you know, like r for ds questions and things like that to decide, okay, this is common. Um, but if it's, kind of obvious what people might screw up, that would be another case where you would do this, uh, where you might give them a hint of, eh, maybe maybe try this instead. All right. And then they had some um, more rules that I wanted to bring up. Uh, I, I would say just, I do recommend reading the style guide uh, if you're as you're making error messages to get kind of some guidance uh, and good tips on how to make good error messages. Um, they, they have little things like if you have the an argument or a column name at the start of a bullet, it's okay to leave that uncapitalized. Uh, it's more confusing to capitalize it. Um, one that I found interesting is they said to always use singular in problem statements. And here, I'm gonna actually pull that one up. Um, uh, oh, there it is. So, um, each result must be coercible to a single integer instead of results must be co coercible to single integers. Um, I, I don't know if this is really as general as they imply, but in something like map where it's doing um, like multiple single things, I think that's a, a good argument for, um, for this rule. 
Um, oh, and I need to turn it. Uh, um, oops, that's not what I want to do. All right, I do want that soon though. All right. Um, if multiple problems, list up to five and then uh, dot, dot, dot for more. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. Um, so they have an example. Result one is a character vector. Result two is a character vector, blah, 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 and five more problems or however, you know, however many more it is. Uh, that's nice because I, I think um, it's not here, but they had another case where they talked about truncating because, you know, it was like they had a million examples. And obviously you don't want to try to print all a uh, million examples. So um, that's a nice way to do that. Uh, aim for less than 80 characters per bullet um, because when they wrap, that can be weird. And for most situations, 80 characters will fit. Um, it's just kind of a general rule. And then, uh, oh, and they have an example of keep your sentences as simple as you can because um, they talk about like you might not, plan to ever uh, generalize your package. Um, that's not, it was somewhere else. That's actually later in the stuff. But, um, you know, someone might try to localize uh, your package someday and try to do the air, like R actually has a fairly good built-in um, localization system that uh, is used sometimes. Um, and if you have, if, if your sentences are too complicated, uh, the localization can get, really hard. Uh, there was a case study that they linked to about um, how like Chinese doesn't conjugate, you know, for like number. And so you might say, I have, um, I'm have i going to do different messaging for one or two or three. So you think, okay, that's, that case is simple, but actually in Arabic, it's different conjugation for zero, one, two, or more than two. Um, and so if you don't need to um, go into that specific uh, situation where it's going to be weird, then avoid that kind of thing. Now, I'm also going to show you, though, that CLI has some things built in for um, case agreement like that. And um, I guess I'm basically I'm hopeful that CLI uh, allows for <laughs> the uh, translation. Like it, they're thinking about the problem. So hopefully they would deal with the. Arabic case um, or help you deal with it. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so um, CLI, one of the things that's really nice in it is um, if uh, if the user has Glue installed, then uh, Glue syntax works in CLI. Now I find it annoying that it doesn't actually require Glue. And so a trick for that is in a package, if you're not actually like using glue anywhere in your code, you can just use import from from use this and import the glue function from glue. That'll keep CRAN happy um, and add a requirement that your package, like people using your package have glue because then you can write error messages and just assume that they have glue. Um, and then you can use things like, um, uh, uh, you know, you have this adjective great and it'll go into the error message. Um, but then also what I'm trying to show here is that they have these classes. There's a whole bunch of them in the help that you can see. Um, I listed some here. So they have emphasis where you can make something like um, italic. Uh, and then you can say that it's an argument and it you know does whatever formatting that um, either you, the user or you or um, the, uh, them set for arguments. They have things for classes. They have things for code. Um, they have things for help. Um, which is cool because if you are referencing a, a function and um, list it in this help style, it'll actually link to the help like in our studio. And so you can open the help uh, directly from the error message with that, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, um, Okay, yeah, and so if you look at like, you know, it's a very long list of styles that they have built in. They do have, you know, like href, you can just have a link. Um, I've been using that in the book club processing that uh, it creates messages when I run it 
and it links to the YouTube video so I can click over there to um, edit things, uh, things like that. So that stuff is pretty cool. All right. Um, so yeah, they do also deal with plurals, plural, yeah, pluralization in CLI and um, there's a whole vignette about it and I'm not gonna go into all the details, but um, the general idea is you put like this, you know, question mark S and it will look at the variable before it to determine whether to put the S there or not. Um, you can also specify like it. So if you give it just one thing, it says, okay, that's the many. If you give it two things, it says the first thing is for one and the second thing is for um, zero or many. So actually this is zero or many. Um, or you can uh, use this no argument that will, um, I don't remember exactly how that works, but it does, uh, it makes things even better. Um, so uh, found no files. Yeah, so it no and file would either print the word no or the number of things. So found no files, found one file, found two files. That's right. So that's what this no function in CLI does. Um, oops. Uh, um, uh, oh, yeah, so this is if there's a list. So if we, um, yeah. Um, yeah, or if there's, you know, if the thing has a, a length, um, it will say remove the package one packages or package because it's singular, um, remove the, it'll list them all and even put in the and and the commas, and then it puts on the S because it's, uh, more than one, um, et cetera. And then let's see, what else do I go into? Oh, and then you can also, if, if this, uh, vector is length three, um, it's zero, one, more than one. Um, so you can make all kinds of fancy messages with this. I have written things before, even using CLI to basically do this. I didn't realize it was all in there. So um, it's really nice that it's just built in and you don't have to think about it. Uh, so that's cool. That's another cool reason to use CLI. CLI also has progress bars. Um, I'm not going into all the details, although actually I did want to hop over to um, our studio and show it because it's kind of neat. Um, so uh, when we call it, it's going to like show the progress bar and it's like really easy to set up. And then the second one, I didn't give it a um, length and actually let me run that again because um, I didn't tell it how long or how big it is, so I can't show a percent. It, instead, it's just going to show like how much is or how long it has taken. Um, it's going a little too fast to see clearly, but uh, uh, that's the let's make it wait a little bit longer, um, and then we'll be able to see it. I should have commented out the first one, but um, it's just nice that that's just built in. So uh, that's kind of the other main functionality that's in CLI right now. Um, so that's nice. All right. Um, so I guess before going into like the transition from using our language messaging to using CLI messaging, any um, thoughts, comments, questions uh, on that before we move on? I'm really, really glad you went down this rabbit hole, John. Uh, <laughs> I've been wanting to go down it myself, uh, but this is a nice summary, and I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to go back and rewrite some error messages in other packages. <laughs> I like. I agree. I had just done some work close to this, and then I was like, "Well, clearly, I'm not actually done with that. I need to go uh, fix those." So, um, I, I think it's really nice like obviously you don't have to apply all of it all the time but i think having these rules um just, it makes it easier to write good messages because you can kind of put some um some guide rails on what does that mean so all right 
Uh, so if you are currently using Arlang abort and you want to switch to CLI CLI abort, um, they they caution against uh, find replace Arlang abort with CLI CLI abort, particularly if you do any um, basically uh, glue like work in Arlang abort or before Arlang abort. Uh, there are cases where that can fail. Uh, so you'll want to use there. You'll want to check those. Uh, so they're saying probably don't just find and replace, like find and then uh, replace if it's simple. But um, you know, I, I I think I would rewrite anyway with all the rules in mind and everything. Um, it's just it seems like a good idea. Um, but they do have uh, this function local use CLI that you can put into your function or into your package rather that makes abort from Arlang look more like CLI and it uses some of the conventions from CLI. This uses this whole onload thing where in your like package level dot onload, which is just an R thing, you call, oh, I should have put Arlang here, but R, you call Arlang run onload in your package level one. And then in place, like uh, 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 more, more related to the specific functions that you're writing, you can put these on load calls um, and then run on load basically finds all the on load calls and uses them. It's just a nice thing for um, like editability. I, you know, asterisk on this because there's a discussion on, I think it's on Arlang right now about on load made something really hard to debug. I think it was just one specific case um, and they're probably not gonna change it, but it, I'm kind of watching that thread uh, to see if they're gonna change their advice on this. But so anyway, they have this local UCLI. When you turn it on for your package, it makes your packages error messaging kind of CLI-E um, as you transition. And so that's what they have done in basically the tidyverse and our lib packages as they're transitioning over. Um, they had already written, rewritten all their error messages to use our lang abort. And now they're going back through and kind of as they go, they're adding CLI versions of everything. Um, if you are writing a new package, just use CLI from the start, I would like strongly advise. Or even if, you know, if you have a package that isn't that mature, and you can use pretty easily switch over. I think it's worthwhile. All right. Um, and then, so then the last vignette in this section is about customizing CLI. Um, so there is this option, CLI condition Unicode bullets. Uh, you can set that to false and that will tell it to, um, instead of using things like check mark, it will use the, um, character string the like the V instead of a check mark or an X instead of the fancy X. Um, so uh, I don't know if there are cases where you want that in your output, um, maybe for easier uh, parsing of the error messages by some sort of, um, you know, text editor or something, something, that kind of thing. Uh, so that that is an option you can set. Um, you can also customize the bullet. So you can say that the asterisk is now, um, you know, the asterisk character instead of uh, a bullet character. And you can do those, you know, one or all of them. So you can do this whole theming to set them how you want. Um, I, I could see this being useful just to make your error messages a little bit more pleasant to you, like um, error messages that are coming from any package where it normally has an X you could put you know, your least favorite emoji or something. I don't know. Um, so that's a thing. And then uh, you can override colors. And um, he, uh, Hadley mentions, or whoever wrote it, I'm not sure if it was Hadley or Jenny or Davis or who it was that wrote the, the message in the vignette, but um, they mentioned the specific settings that they use for this. Because at first I was like, yeah, whatever, it, it, it'll figure it out. Um, but they say that they, they do a specific setting. So that might be something worth playing with. Um, if we go over to the vignette, um, not that one. Um, 
yeah, so they, they show a specific background color and color that they use for uh, the code elements in uh, their error messages. And I, I will say, at first I was like, ah, whatever, I don't need that. And then I remembered that I think it is on um, one of the contracts that I have, I'm using like our studio server and the, the settings on that our studio server, um, something's weird. And sometimes the error messages don't show up. And I think it's related to this. So, um, or sorry, sometimes the code parts of the error messages don't show up. And that's, I think that's specifically what's going on here. It's like, doesn't play, or in this specific situation, it's not playing nice with a, a dark theme. So. Um, Sean, would there but, be, um, yeah. would there be situations where you, you wouldn't want to use, um, the kind of the Unicode um, inf information bullets. Uh, I mean, so you mentioned kind of like a seal, um, like CICD system or something, may maybe where you could. Yeah. You would want um, to like lo log this stuff somehow, but I I'm thinking like, are there terminals in which Unicode so isn't supported? There are, and CLI, so if it's totally not supported, CLI detects that and uses the text automatically ah, okay um but i could see like for example if um you want you know if you're if you're programming cli <laughs> specifically like if you're working on the cli package and you want your machine to match uh the cic cd machine for example you might set that option i could also see in a logging system maybe setting this up so that, so that instead of x it says the word danger in all caps or something like that, where it's like clearer in an error log, yeah. um, easier to search for, things like that, maybe. Um, so, cause you know, you can set them to just an X, but you can also set them to anything. So uh, like they had the example where they're setting everything to both to asterisks, um, but you can, you could make it whatever you want. Um, so I don't have a great use case for that yet in my head. Um, like maybe uh, I, I have some things that are running automatically and they create um, output logs that I already need to do some cleanup on. And maybe that would be very via CLI, although there are actually some better logging packages if it's specifically for logs. So I don't know. <laughs> so. I'm not sure yet. Of a I have good to say, like this, this kind of question and can they like, you know, hesit hesitation that there must be like some, if this exists, there must be some cases in which it's it's not a good solution. Has kind of kept me has kept me away from CLI. Uh, so. so, I really feel like the main purpose of this is when you are writing C the the package CLI, <laughs> that you might want to turn off Unicode bullets for some tests, or for some programming exercises um i don't know i could see maybe in certain locales or things like that it could also be a little weird uh for you but again like all of the tidyverse would be the same kind of weird and if you're using cli then the fix that you that someone does for the tidyverse also applies to your code so even if it has problems it's, it's like there are bigger packages that would have the same problems. Um, but yeah, I don't know of a case where this actually matters. Uh, it might be interesting to search GitHub for, um, you know, like for CLI condition Unicode bullets to see if it's in some like, um, you know, oh, settings yeah. files or something like that. Yep. Um, see, like that might show some cases. Um, and actually, yeah, that's not what I want. Well, that'll do. Uh, not within this repo. Um, <laughs> like, not much. Um, and it's in, like, it, well, let's see, does it have? 
doesn't show the code or the breakdown by um, things. But so yeah, it's like in, co in copies of Arlang is where this shows up. Um, yeah, it's in a CLI config thing, so CLI. Um, it seems to be, uh, um, you know, yeah, no, that's still just in a copy of that. Um, but I could see maybe for pure repro reproducibility where you want your machine to ma definitely match some CI machine. That would be my main um, example that I can think of. Uh, here's an example in a test that uh, situation. So um, they should be doing that in setup.r instead of test.r, but uh, still. Um, yeah, so interesting. Um, not a lot of cases and it, like there are two pages, but it's mostly clones of CLI or Arlang that mention it. Um, yeah, almost all of CLI or Arlang. Um, might as well con or finish scrolling though, in case there's something else. Nope. So uh, it was pretty much, it, I think it was exactly one case other than CLI or Arlang where in a test they wanted to in this GGPP, um, they wanted to keep it set, and uh, that's the only case. I don't know how how actually necessary it is, even in that case. Um, overriding colors, you know, that's totally just a visual thing. You know, might make it look nice for you, and it must be that in my particular server setup, it doesn't think that it's in dark mode, but it actually is dark mode. And so that's a case where I would like to over, override the coloration. Or probably I should just figure out why it doesn't know that it's in dark mode. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So there is this one function, and I'll maybe some more. We might look at some more, but um, these ones are interesting. And it, the, I found these because they were in. Um, one of the tidyverse, uh, maybe the tidyverse style guide, maybe the um, design, uh, tidy design guide, uh, but that one's being actively rewritten right now. But um, it's like an interim way to do error messages that I could not find a lot of cases of in any of the rlib or tidyverse code. Um, but they have these functions where you can set a um a class on your errors and then you can make the make methods for these functions so that um errors of your class uh trigger these particular error messages um they talk about bullet syntax being supported um it does have cli mentioned um in the you know in this article so it's not totally out of date. Um, but so this one, I don't know, it seems interesting. So you can set a class of error and then you create a function that the um, error will run through in order to generate the error message. Um, and then you can have like parent messages. So you can have it inherit from some parents. Um, you can put a prefix on your section of it. So um i don't have examples even in the code this is where it's like is this really anything i don't know and so let's do let's go back to code search and go to um org uh start with our lib and um no, oh, no, actually, let's start with not our lib because it's defined in our lib and that makes it confusing. Let's go try tidyverse. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> there was one example uh, in code where they used this. Um, it's uh, a function, like I can't remember if I think it doesn't, um, 
yeah, Arlang should export this. Like, um, it was just for one example in, and then, you know, this is pre CLI code, some of it. So they, they replaced, they don't use this when they use CLI. Um, so I don't know if these are useful, but they're intriguing. Um, oh, sorry, that's not the right one. Um, but the idea is you can write functions that build up these uh, conditions. Um, it's called by this condition message base function for our lang errors, warnings and messages. Um, so you can like hi make hierarchies of error messages. I don't know yet. I could see this being useful. I haven't found cases of it. And so I can't um, say whether it's useful. So I did want to mention that. Um, other than was, that, oh, go ahead. I was just going to jump in and say, John, but I mean, I guess one, I guess to kind of better understand it, maybe to, to see mm -hmm. what it's not, perhaps. <laughs> um, I, I was, you know, immediately kind of like seeing seeing the names of things here. I, I was thinking maybe it would be like, um, you know how when you're using use this and you have sort of a header in the kind of the information block of information, you know, from CLI is like kind of a block of we're doing this for you. And then there's some things that are done on your behalf and then things that you should do as a user. I was sort of thinking that that might be what this is pointing at, where there would be in a sense like a header, like a header, header block of this is what we've done for you, header block, this is what you now need to do as, as a user. But it seems like it's not, it's not that. <laughs> I, I guess that what I'm seeing in, in, in use this is maybe just straight up CLI with some kind of ASCII art, <laughs> you know, it's kind of uh, well, he headers. Yeah. Asterisk that um, use this is actually using use this UI underscore functions, oh, right, which are, right, 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 um, right. Uh, they're specifically mentioned if you go to the CLI, there, there is a vignette in CLI about transitioning from use this UI functions over to CLI. So like it's another, parent of CLI. Uh, another reason that CLI exists is that uh, Jenny or whoever wrote those in, in um, use this, wrote all these functions and, were, and then they were like, oh, those would probably be useful to have outside of just use this without having to import all of use this. So um, that is something that's nice. Like you can tell that they know the, that the point of CLI is to be imported by lots of packages. And so they are, seem to be keeping it fairly lightweight. Um, which is nice for something that, uh, you know, is for error messaging. You don't want to have a giant system that you tack on to every package. Um, yeah, I, so there was something, um, there was an interim in this, like before this, I think it was, um, yeah, condition message or condition, um, yeah, condition message that you can write uh, S S three methods for this, and there was some that might have been, been advanced R referred to this, like it was an older system referred to it, and so I was like, oh, that that's kind of neat that you write these uh, um, classed error messages, and then they wrote this like this was in between. I can't find, I I can only find one case where it's referenced so far. I haven't dug that deep yet, but um, I want to see examples of it to see how to really use it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know yet. Uh, it's just, I wanted to make sure that people know about it. So like it's, if it comes up, you can recognize it. Um, and maybe we'll talk about it on Slack if I see another case um, where it is useful. I like the idea, like I can imagine um, going back to, you know, I was talking last week about um, like type checking functions. I can imagine using those as part of an error message instead of as the only error message, maybe, um, that you customize the error message for your particular function, but you also want to mention this boilerplate that something is wrong with the, um, the arguments to the function, something like that. I don't know yet. I don't have a clear case. And probably, you know, either I'm going to run into it really soon or not at all. Because <laughs> um, I'm in some pretty heavy error message building right now to try to standardize some things. Um, actually, like, 
it's a package that builds packages. And so I'm writing error messages for other people and trying to get that right uh, has led to a lot of like deep dives into this stuff. Um, so, all right, the other error handling stuff, um, it's like basically the, uh, the basic things. There, there are these um, reset um, warning and message verbosity, actually that they don't even reference what it does, which is nice. Um, but those are for, I, I'm pretty sure that's for when they have the messages that show up only every once in a while. Um, and let's see, ID might tell you. Um, uh, where are you? Um, yeah, the frequency. So the identifying string, the condition that was supplied as frequency ID to Warner and Form. Um, so yeah, how often should this be dis displayed? Usually it's always, um, regularly is every eight hours. Once, it's only once per session. And then these resets can reset that. Um, there are certain messages like uh, deprecation notices, I think are by default um, only uh, occasional. So um, that's interesting. So th that exists. Uh, everything else like that we haven't specifically talked about feels like these, um, this used to be really complicated, then we made CLI kind of situation. Um, they do have all the stuff for backtraces. So that's that's a whole separate thing that we aren't really going into here. And then um, conditions, um, again, that's that header body footer stuff. Um, and the format error bullets, that's no, not needed because you've got CLI now. Uh, and then you can look at whether a condition inherits, like this is for uh, that class system that they added to conditions. Like it, I think base R has class for, it's either only error or only error in warning, and they made it work also for messaging messages. Um, but it, it feels like just like it takes a while to, uh, I feel like to get to the point where writing code where it feels useful to start doing code in S3. I'm not to the point yet where it feels useful to start writing error messages in equivalent of S3, but um, that's what all that stuff is for. Um, yeah, and so that is the uh, condition section, I think. Yeah, that's the end of my notes. Um, so as far as this club, um, let me pull up the discussion because what we have, we don't have signups yet. We have left, leftovers. Um, and I'm gonna try to mark everything in here of what have we talked about and what haven't we, but there are things that are in our Lang. Um, like, I don't think we've talked about any of the session stuff and there's a whole section of that. There are things for um, objects, um, that you might have touched on, but for the most part we haven't that I think would be useful to go through. And so I do want to take a couple of weeks going through uh, what's left, but there's no um, great unifying theme to decide what that is. So I will say I'll, I'll give myself the homework of right after this, I'll go through and try to figure out what haven't we covered. Um, and therefore we can like know what the two leftovers <laughs> weeks or the two or three or four leftover tweaks will be about. Um, that does, if we do, uh, or whatever we do, it, it'll be, we'll be wrapping up shortly before um, posit count, which is, I would like to be done before that. So um, in any case, I think we're on track for that. Does anyone have any thoughts about, uh, I don't know, about the club, about where things stand, about anything really? <laughs> Kind of a stray thought. I mean, looking at the the kind of the index of uh, the, the 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 reference pages, I'm just kind of wondering aloud is like, does it feel like the scope of Arlang is too broad? I mean, it almost feels like this should be decomposed into. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, yes. Uh, partly because it is something that I end up importing in most of my packages. And there are sections of it that I probably am not using in those packages. So it'd be kind of nice to split them up. Mm -hmm. um, Even at the I think, top, go ahead. If you scroll up on the page a little bit, it says, Two comprehensive frameworks are implemented in our language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. So all the tidy eval stuff you don't need if you're not working with um dplyr, you know, with tidyverse packages or tidyverse like packages. Um so that feels like it should be split off. And then errors kind of largely has been split off. It's a little bit in Arlang and a little bit in CLI. Um, but, you know, all the, uh, well, as we've talked about, like they do things for um, argument checking and stuff, but I don't quite, I don't feel like it's quite there. I don't quite like how they do the error checking or the argument checking. So even that, um, I mean, I think if it was split off, it would still use some of the underlying Arlang functions in it. Um, but yeah, I really wish, like I can see, I can understand keeping CLI small and not including all of the fancy error condition handling stuff in it, but a wrapper that just had, you know, basically a function or a package that wraps CLI and enhances CLI feels like it could be a standalone package and then a separate one for uh, like, argument it might be that same one that does argument checking because that's error related um and then they have things for um like you know on load on package load check installed things like that that are um sometimes you need it sometimes you don't so splitting the, these things up a bit i could see that now the other side of it is it's not huge it's not like a big burden to install it, it is big and that's where you know we do have more to talk about basically this section i think um we haven't really gone into we, we had inject we had maybe you know some of the call stuff we had data sim you know we had little pieces of this but we um there's some leftovers that it's kind of funny because the leftovers that don't have vignettes uh, a lot of it is the um oh yeah and here's some stuff that you can use in like every package that you ever make and so <laughs> like maybe go into that stuff a little bit um so anyway so that's what we'll do uh yes it, it will be interesting to watch um like dev tools is now a wrapper around a whole bunch of separate packages it used to be one package including like use this and dev tools were one combined dev tools package plus remotes and package load and all the other things that dev tools uses so I could see the same thing happening to Arlang. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, I don't know if it's likely to happen right now since uh, uh, they don't have as many, you know, they lost Mara and uh, 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 God, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but the guy who, was, uh, <laughs> who I applied for the same job and <laughs> didn't quite get it. So, uh, Roman the, Francois, the French guy. No, no, the um, it, but yes, him too. I forgot. I forgot they lost him. Um, the the Tim Tim um, I don't remember Tim's last name, but he was the he, he was kind of uh the same team as Mara, um, for teaching people to write better packages was his uh mandate. And then, and he lasted less, like he, he got caught, cut in the layoffs and he started at the beginning of this year. Um, and that position, I could see it leading to a lot of simplify, you know, simplify our lang because I'm trying to teach it and no one understands it kind of things. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, I say with, hmm, cause the uh, Headley's big project now is the um, Tidyverse design guide. Um, Tidyverse, Tidy design principles, excuse me, it's not Tidyverse, it's Tidy. Um, 
he is re or he's writing it into a real book about and it's like how to write better uh, our code um with him actively working on this i would guess our lang is going to get attention because it's kind of the package for implementing these things um that are in here and so I, like when he wrote uh mastering shiny that's when shiny modules got a rewrite because he wanted a better way to explain them <laughs> at least that's from the outside that's what it looked like that he was trying to write chapters about how to use shiny modules and then he made some pull requests that kind of made some big changes to how tiny shiny modules work uh because it was hard to explain and so I could see the same thing happening as he's working on this book um, over the next like two years. Um, it'll be interesting to see. And I will say just as a aside for um, you know anyone watching this video or presently here, if you're interested in the kinds of things that we're talking about in this club, this book is uh, worth watching. And he has a sub stack that you can sub subscribe to just kind of see his thoughts as he's working on it. Um, Could you yeah. drop that one in the in Slack? I'd be interested to follow that, actually. For sure. So I'll drop this because then it, we got both. Um, and actually, let me put it in the chat here since people. Uh, um, yeah, good one. Might not be. Or whatever to have it lined up. Um, so that's the book. Uh, that link goes. As of today, it goes to the welcome page, which has a link to the Substack. If you're watching this in five years, that link to the Substack might not exist anymore. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting. He just put out a, a thing today, kind of talking about the overall plan for the book, and some like he uh, appears to have mostly fleshed out chapters five through ten. Um, it's a very different book. It's lots of really short chapters, and it's um, looking like it's design patterns are a big part of what he's trying to do um where like it's kind of specific rules and why they are useful um so you know make inputs explicit put the most important arguments first um and then and it includes um examples often examples that fail at the rule and why it makes the function hard to use including things from like ggplot or uh, well um you know tidyverse things like he, he's not saying everyone else is wrong he's saying i have been wrong in the past too um and then it also has um how to uh like make it if you did it wrong how to make it less bad um without totally breaking your function and things like that and actually i, I read one today where he's like this would be a breaking change but like it's worthwhile um, and so that's, you know, like, uh, gather going to pivot longer. There were a whole bunch of things besides just the name. Everyone thinks it's just the name, but there were argument things that were hard to understand and hard to remember in gather, um, that they wrote a new function because they couldn't change gather because it was, it would break it. Um, and so, um, that whole process is being laid out and he's going into details and like the book exists, but it has always been, it was a collection of thoughts of the tidyverse team basically um, without a clear uh, structure. Um, and so he's going through and he's giving it structure and a lot of things were not like, if you read through it now, there are sentences that just stop in the middle of the sentence. <laughs> you know, it's clear that people just like made, half a PR or possibly just edited without a PR. Um, and so it's interesting to watch it happen. I definitely recommend it. Um, and he's like things that he, in the past he would have put a poll on Twitter or started a thread for people to give him examples. Um, now that that's less of a thing, he is using Substack, which I think actually I was I was skeptical but it works out nice because um, I don't like, that's not the, okay. Yeah, this is, okay, yeah. This is the um, like, no, that's not it. Where the heck is the, there's a, a newer one than this. I'm not used to using 
Substack yet. So maybe that part about it. Oh, the top one is the latest one. Yeah, and this is like this article about tidy design principles. I will throw this link in the chat um, in case it still exists whenever anyone's watching this. Um, this is like the whole philosophy of the book, why it exists, um, what the background is, what the layout is, and then some specific examples. Um, so yes, totally recommend. Um, but before that, we do have this handful of functions that we'll go through that are about like argument checking. Um, I, I'll probably end up taking the argument checking week um, because like I've mentioned a couple of times that I've been doing a lot with that right now. Um, I think they have some building blocks, but I don't think they quite have the argument checking like figured out. Um, and so I'll, I'll be going through this anyway, through the some of the argument checking type of stuff at least, which is only really um, a couple of those, but whatever. Oh, and I, I just learned about this one by reading the design guide today that uh, check dots empty uh, and used, I, I think are basically just opposites of one another that you can use it to, um, that's where it will signal um, that you have an argument that doesn't, isn't actually passed anywhere. Like you pass it in dots and uh, normally that just gets ignored if the argument's not used, but um, those allow you to throw an error if someone passes an argument that isn't you know, an argument in the dots that ends up not being used. Um, it's uh, it, it's it, it relates or it becomes useful when something breaks and that that's why it came up somewhere in the stuff I read today. Um, but it's uh, interesting, like they have all these little things. And so we'll talk about those probably next week. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. All right. Well, we ended up running over again. This club just uh I don't notice. Um so yeah, I will see you guys uh next week and anyone else who shows up. Awesome. You. See you then. All right. Later. Bye. Bye bye.